Actively ID non-identical clothing 4B. For this program, you're just going to use pictures of different articles of clothing. For the train stimuli, for our team, we just did shirt, pants, hat, and coat. And then we did a button-up, a raincoat, a cap, and cargo pants for our test stimuli. So they're just a little bit harder in variation um, than what we have for the train side. So you would just want to print these out, make them all the same size. You might want to laminate them. Um, and again, I think it's important to try and keep them all similar in size so that effort response is the same for no matter what they're picking, especially for those early learners. Um, and so then you're just going to run it really easily where you're going to present the pictures. You're either going to present the test class or present the train class depending on which class you're working on. So if I'm doing pants for train, I'm only going to put out train stimuli and have them find pants. Um, it's important that you only put out train stimuli when you're doing a train target because you don't want to end up inadvertently prompting, reinforcing, or giving any praise on the test side when you shouldn't be. So when you're targeting something on the train, only use the train stimuli in the field. When you're targeting a test stimuli, only put the test stimuli out in the field. Um, so I would not intermix the materials themselves, but you're going to intermix the classes. So you might do shirt first, then do cargo pants then go back over to pants, et cetera, and you can kind of strategize um, depending on if you need to put a train class ahead of a test class to kind of pre-teach. So you might do like shirt and then the button-up shirt and then pants and then cargo pants. So you can kind of strategize that way because within the block of 10, you're going to intermix um, train stimuli and test stimuli. Um, but that is just a quick material sample for peak generalization, receptively ID non-identical clothing for B.